Thank you for staying. Let's get into our first story now. She is 17 years old and in her final year at a senior high school. She got pregnant, was thrown out of the house, and forced to stay with her 22-year-old boyfriend. Nine months later, the young nursing mother longs to go back to school to get ready for her West Africa Senior School Certificate examination. Joy Prime's latest documentary, Classroom Mothers, produced by Emmanuel Jivenu, explores the startling figures of pregnancy in senior high schools, as well as the frantic efforts of stakeholders to keep these pregnant girls and young mothers in school. <laughs> Gina is 17 years old and is in her final year in school. She gave birth barely two weeks ago. She had come home for vacation and became pregnant. The guy proposed to me in April. So he asked me to visit him in his house and I went. So when I went, the first affair that he had with me, I got to know that the next month, that was in me. I didn't have my menses. Soon after, she went back to school. She dreaded the worst after two months of missing her period. Gina did not tell her mother or her aunt with whom she stayed that she was pregnant. But in her fifth month, her teacher, who had learned about it, could not keep the issue away from the family. So in May, I didn't have my menses. The other month, so the menses did not come. So I went to the hospital and then they told me that I'm pregnant. I didn't tell them myself, but when I went to the school, I got to four months, getting to five months, when my madam told me that now, when my pregnancy is getting to, she needs to tell my parents. She, she first told me that I need to tell my parents, but I told her that I'm scared. When I told them, I don't know what they'll do to me, so she should help me telling them. So he then called my auntie, and then he told him everything. And, they, and I came home, when we vacated, the house in May, June. And I came home. So when I came home, they called me and then got to know that this is the point. She was thrown out of the house and was asked to go and stay with the one who got her pregnant. So she packed out and went to stay with her 22-year-old boyfriend. When I came back from school, my auntie that I'm staying with, she threw my things out. But my grandpa told her that she should have patience. So she should pack the things back to the room. She should have patience. When but the boy comes up. That the boy was not around when she sang me. So when the boy comes up, I can go to him so that he'll take care of me. But she didn't allow. She said still she will not accept me to be in her room whilst I'm pregnant. My grandfather went on his knees and then begged her. So she told me that I should come into the room. But she gave me days to go back again. So I should I should make sure I leave her house before giving birth. Gina yearns to return to school to prepare for her final exams. But she fears that without support, that will be a mirage. I know I've made a mistake. That's why I've been thrown out from the house. I know it's a big mistake that I've made. But I need someone to help me so that I can further my education, so that I can be lighting in the future. Because I want my future to be the best for me. Now, preliminary findings by the Ghana National Fire Service on the two fire incidents that gutted the girls' dormitory of the Wasinia High Technical School reveal the fire was caused by an electronic or electrical fault. Upper West Commander of the Service, AFCO1, Henry Asiadu, says, though they are yet to finally conclude their investigation on the two incidents, they also suspect a box iron was left unattended to. Rafiq Salam now reports for more. For two continuous nights, Wasina High Technical School was ravaged by fire. First was a twin one-story building constructed almost a decade ago by the Ghana Education Trust Fund, Get Fund, and used as a dormitory for the girls. It caught fire at the blind side of the students when they were at prep. I'm Apam Juliet Winters. Yeah, and actually we can't best tell what happened. Because we were at class, we went for class preps, and then around 8 o'clock, it happens. Uh, if you can check at the back of the building, there is a window, the win window opened, 
and then we don't know whether it was somebody that entered or something like that but it's not illegal connection for 24 hours later the second fire incident occurred at the girls dormitory where 58 of the displaced students were moved to when we went there it was smoke was coming out from that is get found and rolling south when we entered there everything our textbooks our uniform garish almost everything is just gone now what we are even crying for we the third years the textbook that we are using now all of them it got burned how are we going to survive you see, so the government should do something for us. The government should make sure that maybe they should bring us textbook or just find a place for us to for we the, the, the test students. Out of a total of 316 girls, 114 were affected. Six of them were traumatized and hospitalized at the War Municipal Hospital. Headmaster of the school, Ismail Sali, threw more light on the situation. We have lost all the mattresses, the beds, yeah. and the personal belongings of these students. Okay. All students are still in school, except six of them, okay. who have not yet been uh, discharged from the hospital. Okay. And it is not that they were physically affected, yeah. but I think they are traumatized. The cause of the two infernos, for now, is not known, but the Ghana National Fire Service, who were there to douse up the fire, has not ruled out electrical fault in their preliminary findings. So from the few information that we gathered, that was what the one of the teachers said, he heard of an explosion, a big explosion. So by the time they got here, the place was well alight. And so we are suspect, but we cannot jump to conclusions. We have to carry on with our investigations and come out. Okay. So that's for this place? Yes, that so is for this place. What about the other place? The other place, we may we are suspecting it may be electrical it may be the box ions that we are they are using okay. because on our uh, rounds yesterday yesterday we did our rounds and we saw that some box ions there was a particular box ion yeah. and the charring around that box ion was quite quite intense okay and also when we started looking at the circuit breakers yeah. we realized one of them has stripped okay so we are also thinking it might be electrical, but we are still in the, in the investigation process. Upper West Virginia Minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, who was out of the region when the incident occurred, visited the school on its arrival in the company of the Upper West Virginia Director of the Ghana Education Service, Abdul Raza Kora. He assured the students and the school authorities that everything will be done to ensure that life in the school is brought to normalcy within the speed of light. Please be assured that GetFan will take action immediately. What I have instructed the headmaster and the regional director to do is to formally put into writing what they want done here so that next week I scheduled a meeting with the Minister of Education and GetFan Administrator so that the facilities can be worked on with the speed of light. Dr. Binsali issued a fiat to the Ghana Water Company to extend fire hydrants to all educational institutions in the region. But I've already told the regional commander that would instruct Ghana Water Company to ensure that fire hydrants are extended to all institutions, educational institutions in the region. So I'm going to meet officials of Ghana Water Company so that that is done. Before the Ghana National Fire Service concludes their final report on what might have started the fires, tanks are already wagging on what happened to earlier reports that similar investigations were conducted on some senior high schools guided by fire. Will this also go the same way? Supporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wow. Let's talk politics now. And some members of the National Democratic Congress in the Asawasi constituency marched to the party office to protest the change in parliamentary leadership. They burnt car tires to demonstrate their displeasure, especially with the removal of their member of parliament, Muntaka Mubarak, as the minority chief whip in parliament. Love FM's Chrissy Deborah has more in this report.
The Sawase MP, Muntaka Mubarak, has been replaced by Kwame Abuja as the minority chief whip in parliament. He is among leaders of the minority side in parliament, reshuffled by the NDC leadership. But some constituents of Asawasi are displeased with the changes and want the National Party executives to resent the decision. At a press conference, the NDC constituency secretary, Mugis Madi, prevailed on the leadership of the party to reverse his decision. We are yet to come to terms with the news as to whether or not such decision is taken by the Functional Executive Committee of which both Haune Idirisu and Honorable Muntaka Mubarak are members. Whether or not the Council of Elders of their party were consulted. Whether or not the entire minority members of the parliament of our party were consulted. In as far as these questions remain unanswered, we are compelled to come to the conclusion that the action is undemocratic as it lacks proper and wider consultation. We are by this statement requesting the party to withdraw these changes with immediate effect and to do the needful. These two honorable members are institutions within the party and for that matter need to be treated this way. Some angry party supporters laid her much to the regional party office to burn car tires in protest. They want to destroy our party. But our simple message is without uh, Mutaka in the parliamentary leadership, no vote. That's our message. Personnel from the regional police command intervene to avert destruction of property. Ashanti Regional Chairman of NDC, Augustus Nanakwesi Andrews, calmed the aggrieved party supporters and assured their grievances to be channeled to the appropriate quarters. <laughs> Our party has regulations and they are elders. We will make sure your grievances reach the national executive. Please, we implore you to keep calm and not resort to vandalism. We should unite to take power in 2024. <laughs> Because Muko Namukoye Basa Basa Namutu Abai Emra Abai Endu Mubede Ebedi Yem Sadi and Yempe Abutra Moyano Munyasa Abutreno Petitiano Mesu Maji Nabe Bia said Yadek Akono Yabu Kudia for Ama Asunia Idaba. The Port of Adjoinus, Pussy Debra. Now hackers and attackers of all types imitate people, companies, and even computers with the intent of tricking people into giving up personal information in order to gain access to something valuable. Fortunately, computer science students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have come up with the Anubis Network Intrusion Detection System, and it's for short, which keeps track of all network activity, including data transfers between computers and inbound and outbound traffic. On Tech Thursday, Lava Firm's Chrissy Debra speaks with the brain behind the innovation, Clement Osei-Sumwa. Technology is known as the Anubis Network Intrusion Detection System. The system keeps track of network traffic and sends alerts when it notices unusual behavior or well-known dangers such as spoofing. Users are allowed to investigate further and take the necessary precautions to thwart or hold an action. As a country, we cannot underestimate the essence of data and network security since cybercriminals have upped their games when it comes to data thefts. 
So, and as a country, again, we can't be relying on foreign products all the time. Since even if you go to the market, some of these products, these tools, I mean, are very expensive. So this gave me the motivation to come up with Anubis, which is a network intrusion detection system. An intrusion detection system is a system that sits inside a network. So let's say you have five computers connected together. Now, the Anubis can run on only one of the computers. And what it does is, it monitors the network and all activities going into the network, it alerts the user. So in case somebody tries to perform any malicious act in the network, it sends alert back to the net network administration for let them to know that somebody is trying to impersonate somebody or steal information. Hello. Demonstrate Anubis. Like I said earlier, Anubis is in two parts, the detector part and the sniffer part. What the detector part does is, it scans the network and enumerates the number of hosts and their MAC address is connected to the network for the administrator to know. And the sniffer part, it sniffs the network and actually tells you whatever packets are tra uh, traveling inside the network. So over here, if you launch the detector, sorry, a small pop-up window comes and it asks for your network ID together with your CDA. So if you enter that and you press OK, it scans the network with network mapper. It does a stealth scan so that even if there are firewall rules in, the, in any of the machines in the network, it can still bypass these rules. Then it enumerates the users connected in the network together with their MAC addresses. So when you are given this, you have the option to trust these devices into a whitelist. So use the trust button. And over here, you, are, you have a window which actually creates the whitelist of MAC addresses. Now over here, I'm using MAC addresses instead of IP address because IP addresses are dynamic, but MAC addresses are static. So let's say I am eliminating this MAC address from the whitelist. I don't want to trust it. And I trust these MAC addresses without the other one. So I'm, I'm going to confirm it. The next time I run the detector, any MAC address which was not trusted into the whitelist will be flagged as an intruder. So I'm going to run the detector again. Sorry, let me do away with this. Then the MAC address I eliminated from the whitelist has been flagged as an intruder. So now the network administrator can take further actions to say go to the router's interface and block this, uh, this MAC address from ever connecting to the network again. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Now the genius six of Wadara Basic School have emerged victors in the Ghana Science and Tech Explorer Prize G-Step uh, Exhibition Challenge. More than 800 submissions were received from junior high schools in the Great Accra and the Shanti regions to compete, but 50 schools made up of four to six teams uh, were selected for the G-Step e Exhibition Challenge. The Tech Fanatic students showed off their ideas using technology to solve societal problems. We have more in the following report. Press on the siren here. That will create the awareness of a driver so that the person will stop. This is illuminated child road safety device displayed by the Junior Six of Udera Basic School during the exhibition session at the G-Step Challenge. This device has a safety signpost indicating children crossing and an arm-like stop sign with lead inscribed in the writings of the stop sign. It works by holding the shaft of the stop sign to alert incoming vehicles to stop for school children to cross. The team demonstrated how the device works and then detach the ICRSD from a socket project the hand towards the road like this just enough to be seen by the driver then switch on the um, button to display the stop sign which is quite visible at night the team explained to join use what informed their decision the close proximity of our school to the Okonfanot emergency unit poses great danger to our students as sometimes our pupils are knocked down by vehicles. So we saw that there was indeed the need to bring into materialization this product and incorporate with that also. A very similar incident happened in Kumasi Islamic Senior High School where um, the students had a clash with their drivers and police because they complained the drivers knocked down their students as they attempted to cross the road. All 50 schools exhibited a prototype of the device they have built. Okay, this is called COP 1.1 LPG leakage detector. 
And we developed this thing as a result of the death of our dear colleague, who is called Kofi Oparibia Phyllis. She lost her life as a result of gas explosion. Cow dung, grinded orange peels, grinded sawdust, lemongrass oil and neem leaves. So all these materials were mixed together with wax. So the wax is what has made it compacted like this. So we pour the mixture in a test tube and when it's got dry, we removed it. So you just, this is how you use it. You light it, draw a few of the liquid and stick it to the saucer and put it at a place where it will not come into contact with anything that can bend. The smart cane is specially and purposely made for young, visually impaired teenagers like us. Okay. So what this does is that it senses obstacles in the part of the visually impaired and then it signals them by vibrating. Speaking to join News, the Education Minister, Dr. Yahoo Oseiduchum, said government is ready to give grants through commission for technical and vocational education and training to private companies willing to support students. We have a grant program through CTVET that will give money to companies that want to commercialize this. And when I say give money, it's not a loan, grant. So it's just a question of facilitating that space. So it's not going to be that because we don't have money, we're not able to commercialize. There's funding for companies to commercialize what they have invented. So that's what makes me excited. That it's no longer a talk shop. This is a do shop where you can really do some big things because there's funding available uh, for us to accomplish that goal. He added that the education sector has chalked many successes, but there are still challenges. Prince Ousu and Sen's report read to you. Well, now the Kofi Annan International uh, Peacekeeping Training Center has sensitized officers of the 6th bat Battalion in the Northern Region on gender mainstreaming. The KAIPTC is implementing an 18-month project aimed at building the institutional capacity of the Ghana Armed Forces to address challenges hampering the deployment of women to UN peace operations. The project, dubbed Enhancing Ghana Armed Forces Capabilities, to address barriers to women in peacekeeping is being funded by the Global Affairs Canada. Martina Bugri reports. In addition to create awareness on gender mainstreaming with CAF was informed following a research conducted by the Kofi Annan Peacekeeping Training Center between 2019 and 2020 that showed a number of setbacks that affect women when it comes to being deployed for peacekeeping. It is against this backdrop training sessions have been held for the country's armed forces. Speaking in an interview with Joy News, project manager for the LC Initiative Fund project, Colonel William Obochi said, the research identified three areas that limit women's participation. And that report identified three major of the issue areas as high barriers, these are eligible poor, limited eligible poor, which means that of how many women are available for deployment. Even though our numbers are high, we have a lot more numbers of women in the service support roles. So their numbers are skewed in service support roles. We don't have a lot of them doing infantry roles and other roles that put them in combat situations. So it's a high barrier identified. Then we have social exclusion also identified. Social exclusion is basically what we do within a group or outside the group that encourages or discourages members of the group from full participation. So sometimes name calling, insults and bad jokes can lead to some members withdrawing from the group and preventing them from full participation. So it's been identified that we have set issues and uh, it could be one of the reasons for uh, limited participation for women. Then we also have, or we also identified gendered roles as a high barrier. Gendered roles are everywhere. They are issues that emanate from our culture that tells us that women perform certain roles and men have to perform certain roles. And these have actually influenced how women apply to be employed in the military. Colonel Abochi said, 
the acceptance level of the agenda has been largely supported by the top and rank of the forces. I adopted this garrison tour to reach out to everybody working at the unit. So in the end, we expect that they will be more gender aware, they will be aware of the nuances and issues affecting not just women, men also in the work environment such that when we tackle these issues affect our attitudes positively we we'll create a better gender working environment in the armed forces the acceptance level for the military i'll say is good because when we go to the discussions there are a lot of resistance from soldiers officers and even officers at the top level but that is just natural because of our cultural background it's going to be a gradual process but we believe that we will eventually succeed in driving home the message and achieving change of attitude towards a better uh, working situation for the government process thank you very much most well on that note, we end the news, but stay with us. Up next, we get into the papers with energy expert Kojo Poku.